Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about Aguantando, written by Juno Diaz. Now, before I go into some analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Um, this work by, by Juno Diaz, the short story, is, is of course part of the Drowned Short Story Collection. Uh, Aguantando pretty much continues the story of Junior Rafa and his family and their transition from uh, living in the in the, the Dominican Republic to the United States, uh, specifically in New Jersey in the United States. So in, our, in, in, in this short story, um, what bas we basically encounter is that uh, Junior is telling us that uh, for the first nine years of his life, he didn't really know his father. He only knew that what his father looked like by a photograph. Uh, and his family lived in, in very bad situations. They had a bad roof. Um, they didn't have enough food to eat. Um, I mean, he went to live with different family members at different points of the year. His mother worked at a chocolate factory where she literally got paid nothing. Um, and it's poverty all around. You know, everybody within... Uh, the community that they lived in are poor. Uh, kids are selling, you know, whatever they can to get by. Um, people are doing whatever they can to get by, whatever jobs they can get to get by. And just the life is, it's just, the, the life that he describes within the Dominican Republic or the life that he was accustomed to, uh, there was a lot of poverty, um, a lot of people just doing whatever they can to just eat. Um, you know, because, you know, everything was, you know, everything you, that you had, you had to buy it cheap or specifically in his family, everything that they had was cheap. Uh, you know, their house was not the most beautiful house. Uh, and they had to do everything that they could to survive. Now, he talks a lot about, a, a lot about his mother within this work. Junior is our narrator. Um, and, you know, his mother is, you know, she was happy when when they, she first got married to her husband but then he left for the united states he's working in the united states and she hasn't seen her husband in a long time um and the father junior's father um, wrote to them before saying that he was going to come and visit them or coming to get them uh to you know so that they can immigrate from the Dominican republic to the united states and you know this never happened and now they're at a point where um, they're just trying to figure out what's going to happen. Is their father ever going to come back? Uh, is Junior's mom ever going to be reunited with their father? Um, is situations going to get better? And they blame, you know, their 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 situation uh, where they don't have any money or they don't have any food to eat. They kind of blame it on the father because if he was around, you know, he would be another person that would be able to get a job and and be a breadwinner for the family. But it's all on the shoulders of the mother to work, to take care of the children. And she has family members, you know, the grandmother, um, never family members helping her out. But it's just not enough. Um, so in this work, we, we see how the mother kind of like deals with the fact that her husband is, you know, abandoned her and her and their children. Um, and she has to deal with, you know, raising these two kids. Um, and also, you know, the, these letters that she's getting, she got a letter before in the past, and even Rafa knows this, uh, you know, Rafa knows that his father has done this already, he wrote a letter, called them saying he was going to come to get them or come to visit them, but this never happened. There was one point where the mother even, like, bought a goat and, and had everybody come over to and have, a, you know, a party to kind of celebrate the father coming, but the father never came. Um, in this letter, they kind of feel like the same way. Some, you know, Junior, this is the first time he's like witnessing this, that his father wrote a letter saying he's going to come. <clears throat> and he has a lot of thoughts in his mind about what this reunion with his father is going to be like, or, you know, how's it going to be like to see his father, to know his father, to be with his father. Um, he plays an idea of it in his mind. Um, but the mother is not as happy as she was um, when she got the previous letters because she knows that the father knows how to lie and he's lied before. Uh, so you see how everybody reacts within this short story uh, and how life is tough for them. Um, you see like a lot of men uh, coming on to the mother within this work uh, because, you know, she, she still had men uh, um, attracted to her, um, making advances towards her, but they, she never like, you know, got with any of them um, or chose any of them. Uh, because she already had enough in her case and she already had certain troubles with men, especially with her children's father. And it kind of seemed like she doesn't want more problems. Um, and, and there's a lot going on. Now, 
knowing from the other short stories within this work, knowing from uh, Fiesta in Israel, uh, what happens within this family, we do know that you near Rafa, the family, they do immigrate to the United States. Um, they do um, get better lives, and, and their lives pretty much rotate around you know, New Jersey and New York when they get to the United States. And there's a lot of things that go on between the mother and father in terms of the father cheating on the mother, uh, in terms of the family breaking apart, in terms of family conflict. Uh, so th there's a lot that's going on here. And, and this first story, Argentino, just gives us some more background on um, um, what's going on with this family and where it's headed. Um, I mean, it's great that the father does eventually come back for them and, and in a way puts his family back together. Uh, but at the same time, these individuals within this short story, they're thinking about what's going to happen to them. Is their father going to rescue them? Is their father going to help them out? Is there going to be a breadwinner, another breadwinner of the family? What are they going to do and where, where their life or, lives are going to go? Uh, so there's a lot to, to, to look into this and to just see what's going on. I mean, also, it's like, see it all through Junior's perspective, because Rafa is more, um, I guess he, see reality, he sees reality for what it is. He's kind of understood um, his place in the world. He knows he lives in a poor country. He knows that you have to be tough to survive in the Dominican Republic uh, or in his community. Uh, he knows that his father is lying. He knows that adults lie, and he just he's going to just do what he can to survive on his own and take what's his. Junior has a more kind of like, um, well, he's not, he's still a kid kid. He's not really um, used to the realities of the world yet. So he still thinks that, you know, his father, um, he thinks that his father will come and that their reunion will be a great one um, or a pleasant one. Um, and, and yes, the father does come. We know this from the other short stories in this collection, uh, but it, it's not that, that set in stone for the other characters. Um, for me, one, one thing that's like most interesting about this work is just how um, realistic it is. Uh, when you think about Hispaniola and you think about Haiti in the, the Dominican Republic, you know, bo both of these countries, they, they have um, poverty, they have widespread poverty. The uh, Dominican Republic is a little bit more well off financially than, than Haiti, uh, but still, poverty exists in both of these countries. It's tough in both of these countries. Their, their economies are not, um, you know, in, like, well, their, their economies are not as strong as a first world country. Um, and a lot of people do struggle to, struggle to survive. A lot of people take to the streets to sell whatever they can to get by. And, you know, the rights and, and all of the mandates that, you know, people have in America and protections that people have in America when it comes to work, when it comes to wages, when it comes to, like, I mean, things like a minimum wage uh, that exists in, in a lot of first world countries and in other countries, that's probably, that's non-existent. Um, non-existent. You get paid whatever, you know, your employer decides to pay you. And if you're not happy with that, they have, you know, um, uh, um, you know, an army of people who are in, in line waiting to get work. Uh, so in other countries, in, in third world countries or developing world countries, uh, if you're not willing to work, because the mother within this work, she she is working day and night, um, 10, 12 hour shifts, and she's getting paid nothing. And she doesn't whine or complain about this because she knows if she does, she can be replaced and, and no one will bat an eye and no one will feel sorry for her. Uh, so the poverty and the struggles of this world are very tough, are very arduous, and everybody has to do whatever they can to survive. Uh, in, in terms of a deeper meaning, in terms of analysis, I mean, for me, it's just a lot of these characters. They, for me, they 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 express real human being emotions. Um, you know, yeah, they express real, real human being emotions because. They see the world for what it is. They see that, you know, people lie. They see that sometimes things are presented to you and they don't, they're not fulfilled. Um, I think the mother understands where she is. She knows that her husband might never come back to her. Uh, she knows that she's going to have to be this only provider for her family. Uh, she, you know, she she's dealed with men and she knows that all of these men that are making advances towards her, they're probably going to. They're all. They're probably only interested in lust, and then once they're done with her, they will move on to the next person. Um, the kids, Rafa, is just you know he's getting what's his in terms of his fists, in terms of his physical presence. He's just doing what he wants, and he's getting what he wants with his fists. And Junior, he's still a kid, and he's just 
he's just he can see like things getting better or or maybe his father is a better person uh but i think the the i guess the lashings of reality hasn't hit him yet um and the older he gets especially when we look at fiesta the the story before this uh when he gets older he really starts to understand um yeah you know, he, he well not fiesta fiesta is not before this there's another short story before that but in terms of of the whole the the whole lot of short stories within this uh junior does understand reality better um and his place in the world better um so for me juno diaz he knows what he's writing and and he really captures real human emotions from a kid's perspective from an adult's perspective and just from a survival perspective uh cuz these characters are literally just trying to survive and trying to make better lives for themselves uh but at the same time they know the reality that they live in and and being hopeful um and wishing for the best doesn't always mean that the best things will happen to you no matter um how hard you work or how hard you try um but yeah that's my out uh, that's my perspective that's my look on this uh work uh please remember to leave a like subscribe and or comment and i'll see you guys in the next video